Kailash Ray was also in India in the early days in the in the 60s and he found the uh, wonderful instrument called the Sarod. So he's going to talk about his, his journey, how he became interested and inspired by classical Indian music. Well, uh, it all started in Connecticut when I was 16. And uh, I had already been into uh, blues and jazz very heavily and a little acid rock and uh, <clears throat> listened to a lot of different things. Uh, but one night uh, I heard uh, Pandit Ravi Shankar play on a record, Rag Modu Combs, and I had a little uh, Domino Sugar Cube full of blue LSD, pure LSD. <laughs> uh, I was 16 and put my face in the rug under a piano and I stopped breathing intentionally for about 20 minutes and then I saw a little blue dot come out of the rug, pierce my third eye and explode. And when it exploded, I exploded and I was gone. And the music took me for a, a uh, magical ride through the universe. Um, and that experience has influenced my whole life. Uh, the Rag Motocones, the Alap, the George Alap, um, led me through heaven and hell. And then uh, <clears throat> after that day, I only wanted to go to India to learn music. And that was my only interest in life was music, Indian music. So a few years later, I got to go when I was 19. And uh, what year was that? You got uh, to go? 68, 1968. And uh, 1969, I was in Kathmandu, and my friend Andy Klein and I saw a a sitar concert for me. <laughs> it was a blind Nepalese sitar player named Narendra Bhattacharya. He was playing in the American Library in New Road, and he played very nicely, and Andy had already studied some sitar in India, and I wanted to start learning. So we approached Narendra after the concert and asked if he would be willing to teach us, and he was very friendly, and he said, sure. And he showed us where, where he lived, and, and I had to get a sitar, and he already had a nice sitar. And so we started together. Uh, early morning, six o'clock in the morning, we lived in Swayambhanath, and we'd walk to Kathmandu with our sitars under our arm. And the Nepalese women would be up doing the puja, carrying the puja tray, and they'd throw rice on us because we were practicing their culture, part of the Hindu culture. So we were greeted with love everywhere. And it was a beautiful way to start learning. And we'd come in Narendra's house in the morning and be sitting there in the dark. And then he'd remember he had guests and he'd, oh, turn on the lights. And we'd turn on the light. And Andy took his lesson first. He would play Ragavan, and I'd sit through his lesson. And then I started uh, my raga, Rag Modu Kons, which was the scale I heard on my first acid trip. So I wanted to learn that raga first. <laughs> and um, we did this every day. We took a lesson every day. For I stayed there for six months. And then uh, I had a visa problem. Was My visa was coming to an end. I asked Narendra, what should I do now? I have to leave Nepal. He said, oh, you should go to Bhatkande Music College in Lucknow, India, and study with Ilyas Khan, my, my teacher. And that would be good for you. Join the music college and study from a real uh, bona fide teacher. So I said, okay. So uh, my Swedish girlfriend, Gunilla Winterberg, and I yeah. Went, yeah. <laughs> went to Lucknow. And uh, at the time, I had long matted hair and used to wear a Tibetan chuba with just a lungodi underneath. And <laughs> we don't need all that. <laughs> <laughs> it's too much.
much information. <laughs> I'm going to give you more. <laughs> and we walked into Ilyas Khan's classroom, and he was sitting there, all Indian girls in the class, no men. <laughs> and, and we sat in the back, and he, he said, what makes you think you, could, you can learn sitar? And I, I felt very strange. And, I didn't get a great vibe there. And I said, well, I want to learn. And I studied from your, your student, Narendra. And I love sitar. And so anyways, in those days before I went into, I had several records. I had Ali Akbar Khan records, Sarod. I had Ravi Shankar, a few other vocal records. Anyways, I was very uncomfortable in the sitar class, just when I felt like Boy, I'd love to get up and get out of here. An English girl popped her head in the door, Miss Carol Fraser, and she saw two uh, uh, Western, face, Western faces and said, oh, how would you like to come upstairs and meet my Sarod teacher, Mr. Paul? And I said, I would love to. So Ganilla and I got up, excused ourselves from the class, went up the stairs, <laughs> and we walked into the Sarod room and Mr. Paul was spread out, sleeping in the afternoon, drooling pawn out of his mouth on the white dye. And he, a big red <laughs> puddle of pond juice there. Carol woke him up. Ganilla was a 20-year-old beautiful Swedish girl. Yeah. He woke up, and he opened his eyes. He saw Ganilla. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! What can I do? Sarah's flying. She's real. What can I do for you? Hello. She says, well, we, we've come to meet you, and they're interested in Sarod music. So I had never seen a Sarod. And they, they had a cabinet with four, four or five Sarods. He took one out, and he said, what's your favorite raga? And Ganilla said, Chandranandan. And he took out the Sarod in the afternoon and started to play Chandranandan on the Sarod. And it was magic. It was beautiful. Anyway, so that night, Carol Fraser said, you know what, I have an extra Sarod. I'll let you borrow it and see how you like learning where the, the notes are, because it's fretless. So I borrowed her Kanai Lal Sarod, and I pr played it for three days, and I learned more in three days where the notes were than on six months on the sitar. Mm. And I said to Ganilla, I'm going to switch to Sarod. And she thought it was a good idea. And I put the beautiful Radha Krishna Sharma sitar that Andy had given me back in the bag and put it in the corner of the room and only played Sarod from then on. And then I purchased her Kanala Sarod and I started. That was now 1970. Uh, I enrolled in Bhatkande Music College. Uh, seven rupees a semester was the fee, tuition fee. <laughs> seven. Seven, seven rupees, because it was a government oh. college. Uh, and that's how I started Saro. And then I lived in Lucknow for two and a half years. And uh, five days a week of music classes with Mr. Paul. And then on weekends I'd stay in his house in Sundarbag in Lucknow. And he would teach me privately and I got to learn a lot of things about cooking and Bengali customs and India in general. And that's how I started Sarod. Uh, Mr. Paul was a, a student of Ustad Aladdin Khan and had lived in Myar for about seven years. Mm. He played tambora for Aladdin Khan and traveled around India with him. Mm. And then later on, when Ali Akbar Khan had a uh, job in Lucknow, All India Radio, he was working in Lucknow. He, Mr. Paul studied with Ali Akbar and they became good friends and they hung out together in Lucknow. So I started in this uh, Baba Lodin Khan Mayar Garana style of Sarod. And that was the beginning for me of Sarod. Take a break. Well, 